Welcome to the Four Seasons. I'm your host Ken Johnson and today we're making a underwater camera device. Stick around. Okay, so one of the things that I talk about is conservation, but that's one of the things that you haven't been seeing a lot on this channel. Uh, the reason for that is I've not had the opportunity to go fishing and hunting like I would normally be doing. So I decided that I'm going to get ready for this upcoming uh, fishing season. And with that, I need to do some really cool underwater cameras. Um, but the problem is, one, GoPros are expensive, uh, insanely expensive. And two, more expensive than a GoPro is an underwater drone. And there's a number of ways that you can do underwater cameras. Um, one of the things that I see a lot of YouTubers do is they'll take a expandable pole and mount a camera and then stick it underwater. Um, some have PVC things attached to the bottom of the boat that they just kind of lay over the boat. and They do it all sorts of ways. And I wanted something that was a little bit different. So what I did is I bought a, um, a square 28, basically, is SQ-28 is what it's called. It is a itty bitty, teeny tiny camera. Of course, it don't want to come out. But basically, it you can see here, it just fits in, and then the, it has one little button, and this makes it where it's water tight. It's high definition camera. Um, they don't make a lot of these, but if you can find them, they're very inexpensive. And so it comes, it's chargeable, it's USB chargeable, or micro USB chargeable. It comes with this little bitty thing, but it moves really, really easy. And after a while, that would just go away uh, it, you wouldn't be able to have any type of friction and I really didn't think much of this so what I've decided instead I'm going to uh, take a car mount for a camera and we're going to mark where I need to cut, which is kind of hard to do that on this angle. I don't have a white pin, but I can see where that's at. Same way here. i take this. Now I've got a line that I can see. You can't see it, but it's graphite, so there's a little bit of a sheen. Not much. You really can't see it from there. And then I'm going to take a cutting device uh, to cut this part off. I don't want the suction cup. I just want the base. So that's where I'm going to be cutting the base. And look at this. I need to make a change real quick because I did not cut the way I wanted to. So that's the other thing. Always make sure that your lines match up to where you want to cut. So we're going to cut away right now and then I'm going to cut this device. Okay I finally got it cut. Um, the next thing is I'm going to heat this, get it kind of where I want it heated and then I'm going to put it this is my boat it, I paid like 20 bucks for it I think I paid 
maybe $10, $15 for that. So I'm going to put this right about here. And then it will sit like that. And this will allow me to um, then, once it's set up right, it will allow me to then do maneuvers with the camera underwater. So next step is I need to get this melted. So I'm gonna cut away as I melt this. Okay, I melted down my edges. It's not wanting to stick, which that's fine. I kind of expected this. Luckily, I'd already bought some epoxy. I was gonna do this as a backup plan anyway. So, that's the thing about it. No, you have plans and plans always change and that's fine. You just got to be adaptable. And so many people are not adaptable. They need to be. There's nothing wrong with being adaptable. So if you've never used two-part epoxy, it, it comes sometimes in a mixing thing, or in this case, I'm using um, tubes from uh, Harbor Freight. Uh, this one is, uh, you can use um, in a water or aquatic environment. So that's the main thing that you need to worry about is that some of it will degrade in water and some will not. Um, I'm gonna mix this together. You do it in equal parts. Um, they have different set times on this. Um, this says it dries in five minutes, which means that it needs to cure overnight. And it's just two reactive chemicals. Uh, you need to do this in a well ventilated area. And so, there we go. And this one's marked A and B so that you know which one is which. Just make sure you don't put the cap on the wrong one and have some of that liquid on there because trust me, you do not want to do that. All right, so main thing where people mess up with two-part epoxy, you can be a little off on your ratios, but not too much. So try to keep it equal, but they don't mix it up enough. Um, that's the thing. This, this is reactive, so it needs to be mixed together. And then the next thing I need to do is put this on here so and this one goes on this one so you just see I'm taking a toothpick and I'm just kind of slathering it on and I'm just got it placed here and then once that's set a little bit, you'll see the next stage. And what I'm doing, if you see me kind of eyeing it, I'm trying to make sure that I'm straight where I've got my stuff at. And I'm gonna come around and just have some more stuff around here. Basically, I'm just making sure it's glued to a fairly well. I want to make sure that there is no reason for this to come off. So, this right now needs to sit. This one right here. Uh, it, the first part's already hardened. I've actually done multiple layers. And as each layer has hardened, I put another layer on top of it so that I've got this almost candlestick effect of hardener hardening onto this. Um, then 
the camera itself will latch on right here. And then that will be um, how it goes underwater and sees things. And I'll have a card in there and then do all that. The next step, we're going to let this set and harden real well for a bit. I'm going to cut away. Then we're going to make a harness. And I went to Walmart. Walmart does not really have a bunch of great uh, fishing stuff. Um, especially if you want to make leaders. They just do not have the stuff that you need to make leaders. So what I did is I went ahead and I bought some pre-made leaders up. Um, it's all I could find. These had speed clips on them. I don't like fishing with speed clips. They're not my favorite thing in the world. Uh, I just don't trust them. If you want to lose a fish, you use a speed clip. But what I did like is that these were fairly long, um, four foot long, roughly. I think that's what it is. Um, 48 inches, what it says four foot long uh, leaders. Uh, this one has a swivel on it. I really don't need that swivel. I uh, don't need the speed clip. But these are made by Eagle Claw. Um, they were fairly inexpensive. I've got two of them here. So that's going to allow me enough leader material for what I need. And what I'm going to do is once this dries, I'm going to take these two leaders here and I'm going to cut them up. And I've got my, my fishing forceps here and I, those are actually meant for uh, making leader stuff. And I've got some three-way swivels, also equal claw. And I've got some barrel uh, or some sleeves. And these right here, I couldn't find Eagle Claw. These were Tsunami. It doesn't matter. The idea is that I'm going to make a harness around my boat. And the reason why I want to make a harness, as much as I love Harbor Freight, I, I just don't trust what I paid for epoxy and pay, I, I just don't trust it. It says it's made for plastic. It says that it's safe in water and it may last 20 years. I doubt this boat will ever last that long. It's cheap. But just in case, I'm gonna make me a harness. I'm gonna use one of the swivels and then I'm gonna attach that to a rod with some um, fairly decent sized uh, fishing line on it. The whole purpose is, while I'm using my little um, remote control, if the battery goes out, if it runs into some grass and fouls up propellers, if there's any problems whatsoever, I'll have that rod attached to the boat, to this little RC boat. And then I can just pull it in. So if I'm out, if, you know, if I'm out tethered, you know, anchored up somewhere or whatever, I can still bring it in if I need to, um, should something happen. So it's a, and then if, if the, this gives way, I don't want to lose all my data. I mean, I don't mind if water seeps in and I lose the camera so long as I have the footage from the camera. I'd always get another camera. These are not that expensive. And I'd always buy another boat, but the footage is what I want. That's the thing that I can't replace. So that's the next thing we'll be doing, is setting up a harness. Now I'm gonna clean up. Okay, so I've cleaned up everything. I got everything ready. Now I'm going to use some 
uh, my tool here to cut this right here. And there we go. Always wear some type of eye protection because you might have some type of fly metal go somewhere. We don't want that. No one wants that. There we go. So now I've got a good piece of um, leader material because Walmart, for some reason, just don't want to carry leader material. They want you to buy pre-made leaders. And then they sell the sleeves, though, which is odd. Why sell the sleeves if you're not going to sell the leader material? So crazy. That's what they do. So we're going with it. And I'm going to open this up. The good thing about it is Eagle Claw does have some good stuff. Tsunami has good stuff too, don't get me wrong. Uh, they're both great brands, fairly affordable each. Um, so this little try uh, three-way swivel, they're very hard to find. So what I'm gonna do, See how this boat, this is the cockpit, and the cockpit comes up a little bit for me to put the battery in. I need to put this around here. But not so much that it can go flying off the boat. So I'm going to have to play with this, so bear with me for a minute. I'm thinking maybe maybe we'll do this much this is some tough leader material by the way they make a good leader Ironically, we have fish here in Florida that would go through this like it's nobody's business. So they have to make good leaders. There we go. I'll cut two pieces roughly about this size. Now, if you don't know why, I'll explain this in just a minute. But I've got to get this cut. It went flying somewhere. The reason why I said you always need to be careful. Be right back. Oh, here it is. So I got two. Need four. Now I need another piece roughly about the same length. We might make this just work right here. So the first step, we're going to run line through one of these in. This is a double-sided. I'll run it through to swivel. And run it back through here. Do 
You want just a little bit of a tag, but not too much. You don't want to pinch it too bad, but you want to Gotta be careful when you're doing this. You don't want to hurt yourself and you can do it very quickly with this wire. Alright, so basically I'm doing like that. I'm not setting anything yet. What I'm doing. Thinking. may need to cut this a little bit. I want to have this going right here. So I'm going to actually cut a significant portion of this off. Again, stuff goes flying very easily, so be very careful. And then I'm going to take one of these, run it through. Run this through. that back through here and then run that like that so the idea is to make another one roughly this long. And it'll go around here about halfway. And then the other will do the same. Now that I know how much I need to cut off, because I saved my little adjustment piece. Now I can do the same thing for the other side. So again, Run one side through. Run it like this. Go. All right. I'm going to go ahead and squish these that get them going right. This is not going anywhere.
And what it is, these pliers are meant for crimping. So there is a, a little bowl area that has a recess at one end and a, a little divot thing at the other end for crimping double barrels. And so that is what I'm doing. Is that I'm crimping both barrels, making sure that they are good and set. <clears throat> It's not going anywhere. All right. I apologize. We have a bunch of idiots on this road. Ironically, one of them is the one of the deputy sons, so they won't do anything about it. goes in around here. thing was a little big so I need to adjust you can always take more off but you cannot add so always better to be safe than sorry have to do this just because I don't have the ability to tie
So that, that's really not going anywhere. That gives me a line that I can use to tie on here and a line that I can now tie this onto. And that's going to be the next step. I want to tie up here. Okay. So what I'm going to do put this Now, I can then take this and I can extend this out and see about where it needs to be. thinking that the max is going to need to be extended from this this through. Run this through. And there we go. That is that. We have 
our underwater camera set up. We can use it for everything that we need. All we got to do is attach the camera to it and it's done. Hey everybody, so I just wanted to show you uh, just a recap of the boat. This right here is a H126. Um, it's from TKKJ. I have no idea what that is. Some Chinese company. Uh, they sell this for 20 something dollars on eBay. If you go to Amazon, it's like $18. If you get the red model, it's $19 in some sense. 20 bucks so get it off of Amazon the other so this is what the boat is and I have a very large hand so um, let me get a ruler so you can see what that looks like okay so my hand is roughly eight inches long and just so you can see from bow to stern this is eight and a half inches so eight and a half inch long boat like I said my hand is eight inches long from from my middle finger to my wrist is eight inches so that's the reason why I said this is a very small boat I just have very big hands so, um, the way this works, I'll put this aside now, we've got the harness, three-way harness, so I can attach this right here, and attach a line, and now everything is connected. Uh, it wraps around the boat, it can't go over this side. It can go a little bit over the front. I don't like that, but that's as good as I can get. So I just need to make sure I, I pull from it from the other direction, otherwise I'll pull it off. Uh, the It's uh, glued in. So I do have a harness with the three-way swivel here as well. It's connected to the device all right so it's not going anywhere this is my camera so you can see right here this is how it'll go along the water and that camera all I gotta do is press the button put a card in there and it's taking video footage I can turn this frontward and backwards. I kind of turn this to the sides a little bit. And uh, I could even do a backward shot and have it uh, where the back of the boat is facing the boat and, the, you know, my boat or kayak or whatever I'm fishing in and actually get a shot of me bringing in the fish or the fish fighting. So I can do those shots as well. And uh, I just will have a very simple control mechanism, one of those little gun things with the wheel. And it's just a cheap boat. It's these things right here, they run 10 to 15 bucks. They're cheap. This right here, they run anywhere from 5 to 10 bucks. Cheap. This right here was after taxes and everything $19 so for less than a, a well I mean you can't you can't even get a GoPro for that cheap and this is a remote control underwater camera now I paid two dollars and something cent for this leader thing, I paid a dollar and something cent for the uh, for the the little uh, clamps. Uh, paid another dollar and something cent for the three-way barrel swivels. And I've got extra in case something happens.
you can't get hardly any cheaper than that. And hopefully I'm going to have some very good footage. That's the game plan. So this is my underwater camera device for my my YouTube channel. So this is the boat set up. Got the remote control. Got the camera. And I'm using a little collapsible Shakespeare rod with some Cajun fire line on it. It's got a Shakespeare reel as well. Uh, that's what I use when I go creek fishing and going, just checking out little holes. It makes a wonderful little travel companion. Uh, so uh, it was a gift to me. And I, I've just loved this thing more than anything. So we're going to try this out. It's not the fastest boat in the world, but it works. Hey guys, so I'm still at the boat ramp, but I wanted to show you um, before I leave out of here. I took some uh, epoxy. The last time I tried to test this boat out, um, the video footage didn't take. Um, 
so there was a learning curve on the camera but i wanted we also had a problem with the harness slipping off the boat so i epoxied my harness to the boat um but it's working like a charm it's doing what it's supposed to do so that's a good thing Hey guys, um, so some things that this camera does and doesn't do, uh, it don't have the best waterproof case in the world, uh, but I mean, I think I paid $13 for this camera, so I'm not expecting much. The boat, you have to be careful with it. It, um, again, I paid $18, but it works, and that's the thing. Uh, don't use remote control too much use your line and other than that it's pretty cool so I just wanted to thank you for watching this video pardon the pool noodles but that's actually for our, another project um, I just bought a kayak and so we'll be doing some kayak modifications in the near future uh, hopefully you'll be seeing some fishing videos out of me using my new underwater camera so um, again, thank you for watching. Uh, if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and share this video. Um, it, it helps with the algorithm. It's totally free, and it just helps me to keep this channel alive and up in front of people, uh, something YouTube likes. But uh, see you next time. Bye.